Hey what's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be playing some Grover because we can finally do something with Grover that we should have been able to do for years now. He also got some very interesting balance changes with the new keywords on all of his talents and I also want to talk about something that I think would be a really nice quality of life feature for Grover. So pretty packed video here today. Uh, we are on Outpost Payload because of course it's Monday when I'm recording this. Late Monday, almost Tuesday, and so Payload is finally here. And yeah, we are going to be healing a double tank comp here with Nyx and Ash going up against the solo Torvald. Oh boy. Ah, uh, yes. Clearly, balanced team comps. And uh, yeah, we're going to be playing some Rampant Blooming here because Rampant Blooming got a really, really nice balance change with this new curative buff that it has. So it got the keyword for curative, which means you get 20% additional healing. And the only thing that got nerfed about Grover's healing in terms of his base kit Angel is the Blossom went down from 650 to 600. But the 20% means that you're actually bringing that Blossom back up to 720. And then also the, uh, the base heal from Rampant Blooming itself, the Vine heal, does 20% extra as well. So you're doing a lot more healing with Rampant Blooming this patch. We're also gonna grab our Rampant Test build. This is just a build up and testing. I don't know if it's like premium meta for Grover. I know Fatalis is good, but it's just it's just something I've been trying. So let's grab that, let's grab Kronos 2, and let's head out. And yeah, we're going to see very quickly the thing that we can finally do with Grover, which is very, very exciting. And honestly, it should have been a thing much, much longer ago, but it finally is now. So yeah, uh, let's head back out into the battle. We're going to be a bit late. The entire team is waiting in spawn. Guys, please. Hello, gamers? Hello? Anybody going to actually leave spawn or are we just going to let them push? Okay. <laughs> but yes, look at this. You can now see... Grover's Radius you must in first person. You can finally see it. You've been able to see it on the horse for a few patches now, but now you can finally see it where you're actually supposed to be able to see it, which is in first person. So you can see if your teammates are in range and you can heal them accordingly once your team finally actually decides to play the game. I don't know what took them so long, but um, yeah, we are finally here. Whoa, a bit of a lag spike. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's throw out a root. Every time we throw out a crippling throw, we get cooldown reduction on both the vine and the blossom. So we can vine more frequently, we can blossom more frequently, we can vine away from the Torvald. Yeah, each of these bursts of healing are doing significantly more now. That did 684 there, which is higher than the previous blossom, and that is with cauterize in effect. So without cauterize, it would be even higher. And yeah, I want to talk about something that I think would be really, really convenient for Grover to have that Overwatch actually has, but Grover doesn't. And that thing, oh my gosh, I already have an ult. That thing is a very simple UI indicator to show who exactly is in your radius. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you could have it so, uh-oh. Okay, we're fine. You could have it so that whenever someone is in your radius, you would just get a little marker on your screen that would let you know uh, if they're in your radius. You could either have that on the top left, you see where the HUD is, you could have like a simple like green plus sign on them, that's all you would need. And you'd be able to see if they're in your radius or not. Or you could have it appear kind of close to the reticle. Do you see where my self heals are? Well what if we had, on the right side of the reticle, any a UI element that would let me see like, oh okay, so I have Nyx, Ash, and uh, that's it in my radius, and I do not have 7 in my radius, nor do I have Tyra in my radius, or excuse me, Sky in my radius, same person. I think that would be a really great change, and Lucio in Overwatch actually has something similar. He doesn't quite have it to where you see which individual heroes are in your range, but you do get to see how many people are in your range, which is very nice. And I think it would benefit Grover a bit more, at least when it comes to healing people, because, yeah, you can only see what's on your screen. I can't see that Nyx is behind me. I don't know how far away she is. And so I can hear that she's behind me, but I don't know if she's in the range or not. And a UI uh, element like that would let me know if she's in the range. So I think that would be something really, really helpful. And you, of course, can let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I've actually uh, covered this subject on Twitter a few months ago. Um, and I kind of made like a basic little uh, kind of example picture of what I was talking about. And... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's only a Twitter post, though, so I figured I'd kind of bring that up again. Since today, we are, of course, talking about Grover and this magnificent <laughs> change. We can now see the radius in first person, and we now do a lot of healing on Rampant Blooming. I've been seeing Rampant Blooming played a lot more. I know previous to this patch, Ferocity was, like, 
giga meta because people didn't justify the healing enough to really use Rampant Blooming. Like, I guess people thought the healing was too low to justify using it over the extra damage from Ferocity. But another reason why you might want to consider Rampant Blooming more this patch, besides the healing buff, is the fact that his damage also did get nerfed. Um, I believe the max scaling went from like 750 to 700 or something of that effect. Um, and so, of course, that means that with Ferocity, you're also doing less damage because Ferocity is just adding even more damage on top of the damage you already do at range, and it just scales it even higher. So, yeah, you're just doing less damage, but you're doing more healing with Rampant Blooming, so it's kind of a power shift. And, of course, Deep Roots is still completely useless. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen someone unironically use that talent. I don't think I've seen I don't think I've seen someone use that talent, actually. Just period. I don't think I've seen it used. That's how bad of a talent it is. I was very interested to see how good it would be when it was first introduced, but like now that it's been in the game for a while, it's just it's one of those talents like old overcharged seven, which is just like, wow, this is completely and utterly pointless. Like it's not even a fun or niche playstyle, it's just bad. And yeah. Um, you could try and balance it out, maybe buff the numbers up a bit or something, which I think would be a good idea to do before deciding to rework it, ultimately. Because, you know, they did that with, uh, Eagle Eye, where instead of trying to balance the talent, they just flat-out replaced it, which I think they could have actually balanced out the talent if they wanted to. So I think it would be, you know, it would be fair to balance it out first, like try and buff the numbers up or something. But if that still doesn't work, then, like, this talent is probably due for a rework. Plus, the name isn't even accurate anymore, because uh, you're not rooting anything anymore. Yeah. All right, just pop the oatmeal at this. But yeah, it doesn't root anymore, so uh, I don't think it should be called Deep Roots anymore. People jokingly call it Deep, which, uh, I mean, it makes more sense, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, it's silly. Anyways, we are absolutely doing amazing right now in this payload defense. They have a minute and a half left to push, which means they're basically not going to be able to push it 100% of the way. The only thing they can do right now is push it at breakneck pace and hope they can get as much distance as possible. And we've got to stall them out. So, yeah, we want to make it so we have to push as little distance as possible. I'll probably make, like, the uh, whole payload tutorial thingy before the end of the week. I'm still not sure whether I'll make it a short or not, because I feel like I could narrow that explanation down into a short. But, um, yeah, Payload is, uh, yeah. I guess some people are still kind of figuring it out, as judged by the fact that my team didn't know they could ride out, you know, at the start of the round on defense. So, um, yeah. Ash, please! There you go, live. They're actually pushing it way farther than I thought they'd be able to in such a short amount of time. Uh-oh. Don't beak. You idiot! <sighs> Ash got me killed. I want everybody to know that was not my fault. But yeah, they might actually be able to 100% this. Like, we are falling apart. We're getting super staggered. We're not getting kills. We're just dying a lot. At any rate, they've effectively 100%ed it. They've gotten so far away that we're basically going to have to push to 100% uh, next round. The various uh, or seven saying to capture the objective. My tanks are being cowards. Please, stand on the point. There we go. Alright. They're not going to 100% it, but they're going to 98% it. They basically 100%ed it, just in the max amount of time possible. So, we're going to have the full 7 minutes, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna bat, we're gonna have to 100% this as well. Let's grab some Kronos. And, uh, yeah, let's just continue playing Grover here. I feel like I've done a pretty decent amount of healing so far. Um, it definitely feels noticeably better. Uh, it, it feels noticeably better than last patch. For sure. And again, it is very nice to be able to see my radius. It's a small thing, ultimately, for someone who's already played a lot of Grover, because you generally tend to be able to feel the radius at some point. You can just feel when they're in your radius, you know? Like, you look at them, they're about that far away, and you're like, oh yeah, I can heal them. But it is just such a nice visual indicator to have on top of that feeling, if you're already, in, like, an old Grover player. And if you're a new Grover player... It's just a no-brainer. You should have this, because, like, that's how you're going to easily be able to see. Oh, hey! Okay, I can heal that Ash. Nice. Also, not me missing every shot on Torval right now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Seven is a million miles away. I'm not going to be able to heal him. So he's just going to have to chill up in the rooftops where he is doing seven things. I'm going to make my way down here. Sky. Uh, there you go. Gotcha. Barely hit that heal on you. That's all you're getting. I'm not going over there anymore. Uh-oh. Seven's dead. Yeah. They ran away from our Sky. All right. I'll heal her now because I'm still in range of my tanks. I want to make sure I'm supporting them as they walk it through this section here. Okay. Oh, no, I got stuck. Okay. Well, we can cripple throw, and then we can vine tech. There we go. <laughs> I fix. Uh-oh. Torvald's back. We got the stop in. There's a blossom. I actually do need to heal Nyx quite a lot here. I was looking at her. I was like, oh, yeah, she's full health. But then I realized half of that is purple. Oh, I should blossom. There we go. Keeping them alive. I really do like this build that I've cobbled together. It's just, I reset the cooldown of both abilities with the Crippling Throw, and then the Crippling Throw has a very low cooldown. It's just, it's going all in on cooldown reduction, so I have no range, no damage reduction, none of that, but I feel like it does the trick if we're trying to just dump as much healing into them as we can. Alright, I'm gonna hold for low. There we go. We're gonna cancel, get some of that refunded. And still keep these guys alive. Let's give a vine up to you. Uh oh. Okay, he's just he's out healing all my damage. No! Oh, I can't save him. That's just oh, that's just so much damage. He's gonna try and come in here. Yeah, so we're gonna try and vine down here for the extra heal, but I might still be in danger. Yeah, alright, let's vine tech away. There we go. I'm not gonna be able to save my tanks, so I must save myself. That's the only person I can save. Sometimes that's just how it is. Uh, there we go. You're back in my range. Let's blossom you. Uh oh. There's a vine. That actually didn't send me anywhere. Okay. He's going back in. Oops, there's a shot on him. It's fine again. Throw that down. Get the blossom. We're going to have another vine here for another blossom. And I have ult, so I can use that on these guys as we go in. Uh, okay. Team's fine. That Androxus is mostly just a distraction right now, but he's a pretty high-hitting one. Let's quickly blossom. He's back. Try and hit him. There we go, I got him. Alright, seven. He'll be fine. Let's cripple him. He does die. Alright, good. And this guy is going to clean up with the triple count. Alright, well. Surprising coming out of this guy, but she got it anyway, so good job. Oh, Hi. What are you doing back there? <laughs> okay. Uh, we got almost four minutes to push at 30% of the way. We're certainly pushing at a much faster rate than they are, which is very, very good to see. Oh no, seven. We went in too hard. Okay. Uh, let's give a blossom to you. You know what? Let's give a vine to you. I'm feeling generous. Let's throw that out and let's get another one. Bam and what bam there we go, and then we can throw out another cripple, and if that would have hit, we would have just kept the chain going. But I missed, so you know what? You know how it is. Uh -oh. I lost this guy, oh there she is. I'm gonna die anyways. Alright, let's finally get more items. Chronos 3, morale boost. Okay. I need to just get back in there. We should definitely reset right now. Seven's dead, Nyx is going to die, Ash should do herself a favor and just get out of there. Come on, Ash. Oh, she got silenced. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to... Wait, maybe I can save her. No, I absolutely can't save her. Okay. <laughs> Run away. Uh, maybe if I didn't hesitate, but then again, I probably would have just got myself killed. So... Find away from Andrew. Is he chasing? No, he's coming up here. And he's very dead. Alright, nice job, Seven. Let's vine tech our way up to this high ground. And this will be a nice vantage point to just spam from, as one normally does on Timbermill. Still crazy to me how we just have this archive of what Timbermill used to be like, just in the game now. Like, this is super old Timbermill. I tell you what, I actually think that it might be a good idea to put... You see that bridge where that Yung Illusion is on right now? That bridge that's just connected by a crane? I think that would be so cool to have in base Timbermill. I think it would actually really help alleviate some of people's pains that they have with the map. We're like, oh, it's so big and hard to traverse. You have all these high grounds. Well, this would provide a bit of natural cover. And it would allow you access from this low ground. You would jump up the crates up to there, and then jump over there, and then jump over there. You'd have so much access to the high ground. It'd actually be so nice. Right, we're going to ult. 
Seven's not gonna get caught in that. I'm just gonna burn the whole thing because I'm taking a lot of damage. I'm try and run up here. I was not able to triple him. I'm gonna die. Yeah, he's out here too far. Team is getting some good kills though. They burned the entire Andro ult. If we can just knock them off this point like Ash just did there, we only gotta push it like a few meters. So. Oh, that's huge. She got the ult out. Yeah, we might win off that. We're at 98%. It is literally tied right now. We just need to tap them off of the thing. Oh, Ash, please don't die. No, everyone died. It's all down to Nyx. Here we go. Let's kill you. Come on, we're so close. Just kill this guy. Yes, I got the kill. And we push it through. There it is. That was a really nice, yeah, tight game good there. Time. That was such a close push. I don't think I've seen it stay at the exact same value like that for so long. But yeah, you don't win if you push it 98%, just like the enemy team. You have to push it 99%. You have to push that one extra percent. And yeah, there we go. We ended up... Oh! Oh! We ended up getting 248,000 healing. Nyx, of course, has her passive, where she gets extra healing near the point, And she bought Rejuvenate, so that certainly helped out. But she's not the only one I was healing. I was healing the entire team. I'm Grover, man. I have the best... Or some of the best area heals in the game. A ARG is saying, that Grover build is crazy, I'm stealing it. Well, you're absolutely welcome to. It's my test build, though, so fair warning. <laughs> if it breaks, it's not on me. And yeah, we also got six kills there. We outkilled the Nyx, we outkilled the Ash, and we actually outdamaged everyone on the team except Seven. That is just, honestly, the power of Grover, because he is one of the best hybrid supports in the game. He cranks out damage. He pumps out so much damage throughout the match because he doesn't have a channeled heal, meaning he can spend every second of the match throwing another axe and contributing to the team's damage, contributing to kills, while also having that passive heal that just ticks down the entire game. You press Blossom, bam, you could potentially heal the entire team with that. And with 720 per champion now, that's a lot of healing every time you press, uh, every time you press Blossom, assuming everyone is in your range. That's really huge. He's such a good support this patch with Rampant Blooming. So, yeah, give Rampant Blooming a try with this new change, and let me know what you think, A, about my suggestion to give sort of a UI element to Grover's healing, where you can see each individual champion in your radius without actually having to turn and look at them. And also let me know, of course, what you think about the balance changes to Rampant Blooming, to Ferocity. Let me know what you think about these keywords, and yeah, just have a wonderful time messaging me in the comments. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace out. Hey.